Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. The author of the Bible is God. We can find His heart, His will, and His plan in the Bible. Uh, and a clearer way for us to understand the Bible is through the four classifications of its content. Una yung history, the moral teachings, the prophecy, and fulfillment. And we can also find the history of God and His chosen people in the Bible for a span of 6,000 years. The 6,000 is our salvation history. Story yan ng Jews. Kaya din inaaral kasi we are... Par- Galing tayo dun eh. When you become Christian from a Jew, you're not converted. You're being completed. Ano ba talaga ulit yung covenant? Covenant is relationship. No, it's God fathering a family. It's God wanting to be with us. Did everybody break the covenant? The entire book is a book of covenants, right? Mm. And the reason why it's come this far at umabot pa sa atin is because everyone broke it. That's mm. why there is a new covenant now. You know, before we start rolling on this podcast, we will say a short prayer as a group. And today, Brother J. Paul volunteered to do that for us. And it was very interesting. It was unlike any kind of prayer that we've ever done on this podcast. It was like a yoga class. Brother J., <laughs> do you care to explain? No, nah, it was just uh, leading everyone to imaginative prayers or meditative prayers. It's... Just relaxing and knowing that everything is part of God and receiving and being in that moment that everything is beauty and just that God dwells in your consciousness and just exploring that and, and, and just diving deep with the love of God um, wow. and just really listening. And I don't know how, how you guys felt, but I love it. Even for me, I love receiving that kind of, 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 of just prayer. No, because I love the fact that, you know, Brother J. Paul mentioned that parang, you know, we're carrying like something like burden, whatever it was, diba? And he asked us to exhale all of that. And yeah, parang pati yung sama ng loob ko from last, the last five years ata lumabas. <laughs> so thank you, Brother J. Paul. I, wow, I think that was the effect that Brother J. Paul was going for. God is good. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Brother J. Paul. Brother J. Paul is lay, lay preacher at the feast. And um, Burns O. Kaasi is here. Burns is the creator and host of Unboxing Catholicism. Instructor Harold Resho is, of course, instructor at New Heaven and New Earth City Church of Jesus. The beautiful Tina Ryan. I'm Sam O. Welcome to the Narador podcast. Come on in, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get this show. Guys, I can we start with like a little assignment Because it's, I guess it's an idea that's been kind of floating around, but we never got to it. I think uh-huh. we should come up with a nickname for our listeners. Brother Jay, you have another podcast, the Holy Sheep Podcast, and you call your listeners friend sheep. Yes, or anak lang tupa pag medyo baduy. Na joke lang. Which is so cute. I love friend sheep. I love it. I'm so jealous. Aww. And Alam mo, then... anak lang tupa. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I mean, yeah. But um, Burns, do you have a do you have a nickname for your listeners too? Yeah, it just evolved. I mean, I host Unboxing Catholicism. It's a podcast on defending the faith clearly without being preachy. And our viewers identify themselves as unboxers. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Cute too. Yeah. So with a podcast title like the Narrow Door Podcast, what do you call them? What, Brother G? Hey. Mga narrow-minded. No! Tamu din won that. <laughs> Guys, galing na ako doon, Brother J. Paul eh. Ah, That's a good question, Sam. I actually don't know yet. But let's ask Why? our audience. Guys, why don't uh, we do ano? Why don't we like present our ideas next time? Like Yeah, can we can I we all marinate on that yeah. and maybe somebody's listening they can give a suggestion and whoever wins lilibre ni Sam na Sam Gyup one, one piece <laughs> one piece of one piece of Sam Gyup I'm feeling magnanimous <laughs> I will make it two okay so yeah <laughs> bring it bring it well I was thinking like Dora's would be cute but it's too female what, what about our male <laughs> listeners Doros right? 
<laughs> like I, I like the I like the connotation of like Dora the explorer and I feel like we do a lot of like exploring, exploring here yes. of the faith and ideas and whatnot. No, but then it's too feeling it'll, it'll 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 isolate the men. Yeah, and we have a lot of male explorer. listeners. You guys, Thank let's you. ask our listeners oh. too. Yeah. If, oh. if they have any yeah. suggestions, you guys can like message us or email us, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you guys have any ideas, please let us know. I remember when I was working at um, the radio, uh, when we, Tina and I used to work at a station okay. called Magic, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and we threw out this question to the listeners because we were like, we don't have a nickname. What should we call ourselves? Because the audience of ABS, they were called Kapamilia. Kapamilia. Mm-hmm. The GMA viewers were Kapuso. Uh-huh. And then the ABC viewers were Kapatid, Kapatid. right? Yeah, so yes. we were like, well, what about the magic listeners? And somebody came up with Kadabras. And I was like, that oh. is wow. genius. Oh Kadabra. my god, Isn't that so Kadabra. cute? Oh, it's so cute. Wow. It's so cute. Wow. It's so cute. But I mean, as a, as a guy, as a guy, as a guy for figuratively, Dora. Figuratively, uh, we can be like a female, the one who will receive the seed. Uh, Lahat naman tayo, we receive the seed. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, Harold, the seed! <laughs> Farmers. Okay, all right. This isn't really gonna go anywhere. Not mm, on this yeah. episode. So, But yeah, I thought I'd just, you know, throw that out there. But yeah, speaking of the seed, we have been doing this new series called Road to Revelation. We are discerning together the testimony of Shinjaji Church of Jesus on the book of Revelation. This is actually episode number five in the series. And Insta Harry, um, over the, I was going to say over the weekend, but no, a few days ago, I saw on YouTube that you guys actually launched an English YouTube channel where I think your lessons in the class, they're like they're being uploaded now in English. Right? Yes, we do have. So, yeah, you guys might want to check that out. I mean, I bring that up because I just wanted to confirm like what you're going to be presenting to us and sharing with us on this podcast. Like, is that the sequence that we're going to follow? Ah, uh, yes, because in Shinchenji, Church of Jesus, what we do when we study the Bible, we really have um, yung ready na, na mga lessons na kasi progressive yung pag-aaral. The, um, habang tumatagal, mas lumalalim. And even yung mga lessons ay connected sa isa't isa. And that's how we're going to present it here. Kasi towards the end, pagdating natin sa Revelation, since it's the road to Revelation, everything will be clear na and then mas madali natin maunawaan yung book of Revelation. Yes, Brother Jay. May question ako, um, Insta Harry. Kasi diba tinatawag nyo, like, y- yung ganda na pronunciation mo ng Shinshanji Church of Jesus. Paano po kunyari Bisaya yung member nyo? Like, how, are they like... Shinshanji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would be the Messiah? May bad joke ako, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. May ko, guys. Okay. Ewan ko, brother, siya hindi pa namin na-try. Pero, just a trivia, the reason why we, um, recently, we prefer to call it New Heaven, New Earth, kasi maraming hindi talaga kayang ma-pronounce yung mm-hmm. Shinchanji. Yes. So, mas mm-hmm. madali ma-pronounce yung New Heaven, New Earth. But basically, it has the same meaning naman. Okay. Yeah. What was your Nakatulog joke, na ako tonight. <laughs> Ah, baka magalit sa akin si Harold eh. Kasi nung oh, nung 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 Oh my, oh my gosh. That's... Sorry, Harold. Recall lang yun. Eh. Sorry, akala ko okay nabibili lang. sa Aji Ichiban to. <laughs> ano ka Aji Ichiban eh? Anyway, go I ahead. Love I love that story. I love that story. Pero effective siya sa mga pimples kasi before na try ko yun. <laughs> Oo nga. Sabi ko na eh. Moms know best. Guys, come on. <laughs> Ako ginamit ko pearl eh. Oh, wow. That Ako tubig lang ng tubig. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tama, kayo? Okay, okay. What do we talk about now today, Insta Harry? What are you sharing oh, with us? Um, what we'll be talking about today is about the book and its content. But before we proceed with that, I just want to do a very quick recap ng mga past lessons natin. 
because Woo-hoo! last time we talked about yep. the creations of God and among all God's creation, tayong mga tao ang pinaka-special because tayo lang yung nalika in His image and likeness. Yan, yung nakikita nyo sa mirror. Yan yung pinaka-magandang nila lang na nalika ng Diyos. <laughs> and also, God entrusted to us all of His creations. Kaya meron tayong malaking responsibility for God. And nabanggit din natin that there are at least two composition of as human beings meron tayong spirit at meron tayong flesh but even though our spirit even though our flesh dies here on earth babalik lang to sa ground pero yung spirit natin ay babalik sa Dios that's why it's important for us to keep our spirits alive in the eyes of God pero paano natin ma-achieve we have to eat the spiritual food which is God's word at yun yung magiging paraan para kahit na mamatay again yung flesh natin dito we will go back to God and we will be alive in His eyes. And uh, yun yung paraan para maging connected din tayo sa Diyan. <laughs> o nga pala. <laughs> alive! <laughs> Guys, ako lang nakaalala. Ano ba yan? <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. Nagulat Sorry, ako. Bakit nagagaganon sila? And then, I, I got it. Okay. Sige, Ay. so... <laughs> so, ang goal natin is to be connected again with God. And that's why yung another lesson natin is about religion. It came from the Latin term religare, to be connected again. At ang gusto ng Diyos ay maging connected tayo sa Kanya. And also from the Korean term chongyo, which means highest teaching, itong religion na tayo binigay sa atin ng Diyos una para makonek sa Kanya at pangalawa through the highest teaching na incomparable sa mga teachings dito sa mundo. So through that, yung purpose nito, masolusyonan yung kasalanan, masolusyonan yung source ng kasalanan, and then God will be able to dwell with us. And that's His will for every one of us. So, for tonight, um, nakita natin na itong mga bagay na to ay nasa Bible. At ang pag, pag-aaralan natin or pag-usapan natin is about the Bible and its content. So, wow, class alam natin. Class feels talaga, ha? Yay, Woo-hoo! teacher! Sonsinim! I have my notepad. All right, here we go. <laughs> But, oh my gosh, I forgot my Bible again. I'm so delinquent, man. Sorry. <laughs> But you guys have it. Okay, so it's it's fine. Okay, uh, And to all the listeners, if you have the Bible with you. Um, but basically, the Bible, even though it was written by different writers, about 35 to 40 people, an exulat nito, we all know that the author of the Bible is God. Kasi even the Bible tells us na itong mga prophets, itong mga nagsulat ng Bible, they did not write their own will, but they wrote the will of God because they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So kaya ano yung makikita natin sa Bible? Yung will, yung puso, or yung plano ng Diyos. And that's why when we read the Bible, instead of looking on the intent of the writer, let's look at the intent of the author, and that is God. So tonight, we will talk about the Bible. Pero bago yan, I also want to ask etong group na to, sino sa atin nakabasa na ng book na nagkaroon ng movie adaptation? Oh, gosh. Ayan. Of course, yes. Yeah. But... I hate that because the movie always sucks. Ulang. Right? Uh-uh. Diba? Diba? Uh-oh. Isn't that the general experience? It never yeah. it never measures up to the book. Exactly. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Mm. Mm. Ay, oh si Brother J. Mayalig din sa Lord of the Rings, right? Uh-uh. Lalo na yung mga fantasy fantasy, no? Harry Potter. Yes. Mm. Game of Thrones. I mean, I didn't even read I'm the book, but I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of gory and there's a lot of sex. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Sige, bago pa lumalim yung usapan natin sa mga bagay na yun, pumunta tayo. <laughs> Not the Kamsa topic. Kamsa ham ni Dasong okay. si <laughs> uh, Tingnan natin, bakit nga ba ganun? Why do we prefer reading the book compared to just watching the movie? Ano kayo yung possible na reason? Mm. Yes. Burns. Okay, okay. You, you can answer. Teacher Spetsy Burns, man. Ang sing name, ang sing name. Um, kasi kapag uh, nasa libro, teacher, nababasa natin eh. I mean, may detalye. Tama po ba yun? Tama po ba yun? <laughs> exactly, di ba? The more details we read in the book, it adds up to the experience na nagiging richer na siya. Na parang feeling natin kasama na tayo dun sa story. Kung makikita natin, kumpara dun sa pagbabasa natin ng book, parang expectation versus reality. Yung sobrang vivid ng mga details when we were reading it. Pero nung nagkaroon na ng movie, malayo dun sa nakita natin. And if we have that um, desire to read, a, to 
to read a book para maunawaan natin what more yung book na binigay sa atin na Diyos. The Bible which is the basis of our faith, of our life of faith. And so tonight, pag-uusapan natin ang Bible and I know marami ding mga details dito. And ako mismo na-experience ko to before na when I try to get the Bible in our house na medyo may alikabok-alikabok pa pagbukas mong ganun. Uh, pagpagan mo pa. Uh, uh, I was thinking, ano ba to? Babasahin ko lang ba to? Or is there something like uh, I should be doing? So, kung titingnan natin, kasi napakaraming details din talaga sa Bible. And a clearer way for us to understand it is by using the four classifications of the Bible content. So, ano tong four, Bible classif- uh, four classifications of the Bible content? So, we'll go through this tonight. So, una dito ay yung history. History, um, in simple terms, are things that happened in the past. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, um, those things that happened in the past will serve as warnings and examples for us. So warnings na kapag nakita natin may mali silang ginawa, huwag na natin tularan. And then examples, if they did something good, then yun yung dapat na tularan natin. Yung pangalwa naman ay yung moral teaching. Moral teaching in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, sinasabi dito that all scripture is God-breathed, that is useful for teaching, rebuking, training, and correcting in righteousness so that we will be able to do the good works of God. So, alam ko maraming iba't iba mga teaching sa mundo, but the moral teaching that we can find in the Bible is teaching us how to be a godly person, how we can be a righteous person in the eyes of God, and how we can be created according to God's word. The third one, actually yung unang dalawa yung history and moral teaching, mas madali siyang madistinguish in the Bible compare to the third and fourth one. Kasi ito yung laging magkasama to, yung prophecy at saka yung fulfillment. I mean, dapat magka-partner ito kasi yung prophecy are the promises or the plans that we can find in the Bible. Mahirap maunawaan yung prophecy and that's why people interpret it in their own ways. Merong kanyang-kanyang mga kaunawaan. At kaya mahirap din talaga ma-distinguish kung alin yung tama at alin yung mali. Pero kailan lang magiging malinaw yon kapag nagkaroon na ng fulfillment. And it's actually part of God's nature. Hindi siya katulad ng tao because when He promised something, He will surely fulfill it. So katulad na yung prophecy ay nagkakaroon ng fulfillment. And so kung titignan natin, even itong kapag nagkaroon na ng fulfillment yung pangako ng Diyos, nagiging part na siya ng history. Just like what happened at the time of first coming. Before dumating si Jesus, merong mga prophecy in the Old Testament. Nung dumating si Jesus, finulfill niya ito. At nung naging fulfillment na ito, naging part na siya ng history natin. Kaya part to ng Christian history or the history that we can find in the Bible. So those are the four contents. And since we're already talking about the history, let's also discuss the history of God and His chosen people for 6,000 years in the Bible. So, ano tong chosen people na to instahari? So, <laughs> kasi... Are they people na chosen? <laughs> Malamang. I mean, wild guess. Wild guess, ha? <laughs> ah, si, God. Si, si Pikachu, Charizard. I choose Sagi you! Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> ano ba yan? But basically, okay. in the Bible, when you go to Amos chapter 3, verse 2, sinasabi dito na merong pinili ang Diyos out of the families of the earth. May mga nabubuhay sa panahon na yun. At sino yung pinili niya? Yung mga Israelites. That's why we consider them as the chosen people of God. At kasama na rin dito yung mga naglilid sa kanila. Um, if we will also read Psalm chapter 89 verse 3, sinabi doon ng Diyos na I will make a covenant with my chosen one. At sino yung chosen one na yun? Si David who was leading them during that time. So makikita natin doon, namimili ng tao ang Diyos. We call them the chosen people technically. <laughs> But... Um, kaya nag kaya pumipila ang Diyos ng mga tao kasi bibigyan niya ng covenant. At yung covenant ay importante. Kagaya ng sinabi ng Diyos kay Moses in Exodus chapter 19 verses 5 to 6, If you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, you will be for me my treasured possession, a kingdom and priest and a holy nation. Pero may condition kasi yung covenant. If if you obey me fully and keep my covenant. So, 
kapag nagawa yun, then matatanggap natin yung pangako ng Diyos or yung blessing that is coming from God. And that's why in every generation na makikita natin sa Bible na pumipili ang Diyos ng chosen people niya, nagbibigay siya ng covenant. So let's, we will have a topic uh, about the covenant and also we will go through the covenant that was given to each of these chosen people. But for today, papasadahan lang muna natin sila. So let's start with the first man um, that was created in the image and likeness of God and that's Adam. So at the time of Adam, alam natin that God told him that you should not eat from the That's tree right. of knowledge of good and evil because if you eat it, you will surely die. die. Kung iisipin natin, again, sa mga tao, sa nakikinig sa atin, hindi lang naman, kakainin lang naman yun, tapos big deal na kaagad. But then again, we have to look at it at the lens of God. It's a covenant at importante na makip yung covenant. Yun yung agreement. Kung baga, both parties should comply dun sa usapan nila. So, dahil hindi sinunod yun, ano rin ibig sabihin nun? Nasira din yung covenant. So, alam, ayan, sige, sige, yes, Tina. Ryan. Quick question lang, guys. Parang nang dating kasi sa akin yung covenant, ano, parang utos, talaga utos, ba? Diba? Utos ba? Well, More of an agreement eh. Sinabi ng Diyos okay. na wag mo tong gagawin kasi kapag ginawa mo to, may kapalit. Surely mamamatay kayo. Oo, no, galing. Tapos ginawa pa rin nila. Ang galing. <laughs> Pero yun, Based. makikita. Yes, yes. Nede, siguro lang to support. Siguro Tina kasi we have to just parang put our idea na this is how the Jews understood God. Kaya parang parang level 1 to level 3 hanggang dumating si Jesus. May may tama dito, may mali dyan. Kasi never natin, uh, na, never nila maarok ang Diyos. That's What's why that? nag... Ano maarok. Ang uh, maunawaan ba? Tama. Hindi natin makomprehend uh-huh. fully si God. So, so hindi natin mag-gets yung... Yun nga, hindi natin mag-gets fully yung covenant niya. That's why... Kasi pag sinunod natin si ang Diyos, hindi for God's win yun eh. For our win yun eh. We obey God for our sake. Hmm. It will not add value to God eh. Kasi complete siya eh. Perfect siya eh. We, it, hindi, hindi siya parang like sa mga movies ng Greek gods, Greek pantheon, pag we worship nila si Zeus, lumala ka si Zeus. Hindi. <laughs> we don't add value to God. We do not complete Him. So when we obey Him, uh, we, are, we are actually completed slowly as well. So parang for those our listeners lang na maybe the yun, who are like have the same question. You know, just to support. Thank you. Why are you wearing a blazer today, by the way? Kasi akala ko formal tayong lahat. <laughs> just okay quick, quick lang. You look commercial. good, Brother Jay. Uh, yes, he does. He does. And I uh, love that he has like a you know, little man bun going and everything. <laughs> so Burns and I showed up super randomly and we're both wearing plaid and then Tina know. saw that and you know got all jealous gaya, gaya, grabbed, puto maya. <laughs> uh, grabbed something plaid as well just in case you're wondering I'm sorry okay that was a short commercial break C- please continue Insta Harry that's fine Um, just to add dun sa sinabi ni Brother Jay because God is a covenant keeping God ano man yung mangyari ikikip niya yung covenant at tayong mga tao mag- dapat magkeep din ng covenant on our end and just like what I promise ito yung pag-uusapan natin today about sa contents ng Bible at yung sa history na makikita natin between God and His chosen people. So after Adam and Eve committed the sin, patuloy-tuloy yung mga tao, they are um, um, palalim ng palalim yung mga kasalanan nila. And that's why God has to choose a righteous person and that's Noah, yung ninth descendant from, from Adam at nagbigay siya ng covenant na dapat uh, gumawa siya ng ark para maligtas yung mga tao they will have to enter the ark kasi kung hindi, mamamatay sila. And alam natin na eight lang yung nabuhay noon, including Noah. And so, makikita natin, mag-fast forward tayo, the tenth descendant from Noah is Abraham. At ganun din, nagbigay din ng pangako just kay Abraham, he will be the father of many nations and his descendants will be enslaved in a country not their own for 400 years and then they will come out with great possession. So, pangako to ng Diyos kay Abraham. Pero nagkaroon na to ng katuparan sa panahon ni Moses. So, mm-hmm. God chose Moses 
Alam natin yung burning bush. And then, pinapunta siya sa Israel. Hindi. Pinapunta siya sa Egypt, Egypt. <laughs> para ilid yung mga Israelites outside ng Egypt papunta sa Canaan or sa Promised Land. At kung titignan natin, nagkaroon ng fulfillment yung pangako. And um, after noon, nasa Promised Land na sila, na-establish on 12 tribes and the people just keep on sinning against God. Yes, Brother Jay. In the Harry, bago ka magpatuloy, Trivia na natutunan ko when I went to the Holy Land. Yung land of milk and honey is not honey from bees. It's the honey from dates. Ganun kasarap yung dates sa Israel. So what they would have recipes na yung lamb or yung yeah, uh, or chicken, they would they would marinate it in in honey date. Tapos pag ni-roast mo, ay grabe, mm. sobrang sarap. So, yun lang, just a trivia that I found out when I went there. So, it was honey dates. Oh, Jones to. Ayan. So, we should be trying that kapag natuloy tayo. Oh, yes, that's a good match. Sorry, Trip to Harry. Jerusalem. <laughs> yes! Trip to Jerusalem. <laughs> Baka maging games lang to. Sana may karoon ng full time. Dami natin gustong gawin, guys, no? Squad goals. Dami natin time, uh, eh. Makaroon ng full time na dyan, guys. Next. Yun na yung tawag natin sa audience. Joke lang. <laughs> Go ahead, Harold. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. So, nasa, Isra- nasa kana na sila and um, patuli pa rin sila nagkakasala sa Diyos. And yung worst na ginawa nila was at the time of Solomon that they are even worshiping other gods. Isa sa mga pinakaunang commandments ng Diyos ay huwag mag-worship ng Diyos Diyosan or ibang Diyos. And yet, they still committed this sin against God. And so, ang tagal na nung history na yon at makikita natin Sobrang broken heart din ang Diyos sa panahon na to. And yet, ang gugustin pa rin na iligtas yung mga tao. And that's why He promised of the coming of the Messiah. So through the prophets, nakasulat din, doon na magpapadala ng Messiah ang Diyos. And uh, after noon, dumating na si Jesus, yung first coming. At even in John chapter 5 verse 13, sinasabi doon ni Jesus na yung scripture na pinag-aralang mabuti ng mga Israelites, it's it testifies about him. Kasi siya yung makikita na nakapangako doon. And just to also show na talagang ito yung history ng Diyos and na kanyang chosen people, in Luke chapter 3, we can find the genealogy of Jesus way back at the time of Adam. And even in Matthew chapter 1, yung genealogy naman ni Jesus is up to the time of Abraham. So, makikita natin yung succession na talagang connected sila at ito yung mga piniling tao ng Diyos. At kanina nabanggit ko na it's 6,000 years. Nung una ko itong napakinggan sa center, I also was thinking in my mind, paano nila nakuha yung 6,000 years? Ganon din ka-importante yung genealogy in the Bible because it also shows like the years that had um, passed at kung for our audience or for our listeners, I also want to do like a simple math para ma- ma-explain lang kung paano naging approximate na 6,000 years. Ako. <laughs> Bakit? Oh my gosh, do we all are we all horrible in math because Wait. I I'm the worst. I don't like math. Oh Bumagsak ang LJ 101 eh. Oh, I almost my lost my scholarship because of that. Oh, oh my you goodness. are my Let people. my people go. Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel so I am... connected with you guys. I know Sam. Si Tina yata mo magaling sa math. Don't claim you're the worst kasi sa grade 3 pa lang ako guys, meron na akong tutor sa math. Oh. Ako rin, ako rin. Bumagsak pa <laughs> college uh, sa Alj 101 bumagsak ako. I well, let's clarify to... that. Um, uh-huh. ayoko lang ng math kasi yung pagka meron ng x and y yung numbers. Pero kung numbers lang sige, pwede pang pagtiisan. Ayaw oh, mo na pa ayaw at ni algebra. Ayaw ni Burns sa X. Ayaw niya ng X's. Eh. Uh-huh. <laughs> niya, pero Y's lang. Y's. Ako dami ko Y's, guys. Why did I go out with him? <laughs> oh, pwede, pwede. Uy, pwede yung joke sa talk yan, ha? <laughs> Ito yung gusto kong na-unbox natin sa narrow door, eh. Go ahead. Paano pag lahat ng okay. listeners natin, sobrang like stat expert, yung mga BS math? More power. I don't think, yeah, Good. lahat sila ganun. <laughs> I'd be so scared. <laughs> Pero itong computation na to, the years that I'll be showing to you will be simple. So let's okay. start with Adam to the time of Noah. That's approximately 1,600 years. From Noah to Abraham, that's approximately 400 years. So 1,600 plus 400. Wow. <laughs> 2,000! 2,000, right? 
Uh, <laughs> ano ba yan? Bakit gano'n may computation? Eh, joke lang. Sige lang, sige lang. Sige. 2,000. Repeat. Ta- Adam muna to Noah. Adam to Noah. Approximately 1,600. <laughs> Alikat ni Tina. Asar to ha. Oh, Noah to Abraham. Noah to Abraham. Approximately 400 years. 2,000 na. Mm. Okay, 2,000. So from mm. Abraham to Moses, to Moses, 500 years. So approximately 500 years. To five. From Moses to Jesus, approximately 1,500 years. 4,000! 4,000 years. Ayan. Okay. Naka 4,000 na tayo until the time of Jesus. Ngayon, kapag titingin tayo sa mga diplomas natin, oh, in the Ayan. year of our Lord Jesus Christ, And year 2021. So approximately another 2,000 years. So 4,000 plus 2,000. No, approximately 6,000 years. Diba? O, oh, madali lang. So, again... Babalik tayo sa ating pinag-usapan ngayong gabi. Makikita natin in the Bible first, it is written by different people, but the author of the Bible is God. We can find His heart, His will, and His plan in the Bible. Uh, and a clearer way for us to understand the Bible is through the four classifications of its content. Una yung history, the moral teachings, the prophecy and fulfillment. And we can also find the history of God and His chosen people in the Bible for a span of 6,000 years. Na naglasa ng 6,000 years. Sorry, Harold, ano yung four things? History, moral teachings, moral teachings prophecy, and fulfillment. Fulfillment. Okay. Oh, inox na notes. <laughs> Diligent student tayo, di ba? Okay. Reactions, uh, comments, violent uh, reactions. No. Words. Ikaw muna sa akin kanina pa ako nagre-recite eh. Asar na si Me? Harold. Baka sabihin sip-sip naman tong batang to. No, but I mean Tina and I, you know, again, we have been taking these classes. So it's not like I'm hearing this for the first time, you know. Sabi ko nga. Um, it's good to hear it again though. Like it's a good refresher for me. And very very like, you know, classroom vibes with the way, you know, Insta Harry is like, okay, we do a recap and then we do the new lesson and then there's a recap again. I'm digging it. But yeah, go ahead, Burns. Yeah, I just want to react first. Then later, I'll ask some questions because I'm really curious how Teacher Harold will answer uh, some of the questions that I ask myself also. Just to add to the covenant structure of salvation history that Harold said, it's actually very beautiful because that's also the understanding of the church. And this is something that is common between the Catholic Church and the New Heaven and New Earth, Shinshinji Church of Jesus. And it's something beautiful that Covenant is the key that unlocks the scripture. Ano ba talaga ulit yung covenant? Covenant is relationship. No, it's God fathering a family. It's God wanting to be with us. No, so all throughout the Bible from the very beginning, di ba nga, God was walking with Adam and Eve, no? So that's like uh the the covenant being lived out. And then sabi nga ni Tina tsaka ni Harold kanina, no, it's always man who always lets go of God's hand. Alam mo yun, yung tipong hinahawakan yung kamay natin ni Lord. Tapos tayo lagi nagbumibitaw. No? Tapos Asaway. lagi siya. Mm-mm. Gusto ko lagi ganito. Lagi siya yung nag, ano, nag Yeah, ganyan. Nag, anong tawag dyan? H-H-W-W-P-S-S-P. P-S-S-P? S-P? Holding hands Holding while hands walking. Pas way sway pa. Pas way sway pa. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love so hard doon ta. So, ang, gusto ko lang idagdag doon kay Harold na... Another thing that the church teaches us, and this has been the teaching for the two, past 2,000 years. Again, we're not reinventing the wheel here, no? One thing that I like about Christianity, guys, is this is not a religion wherein we need to invent things. No, It's not like grocery pili ka. Ay, ito mukhang maganda tong belief na to. Ito, maganda to. Ay, ito hindi ko to gusto paniwala. So, a lot of the things that we study, that we're studying now, has been passed on to us for 2,000 years. And one of the beautiful things and truths about covenant is for every covenant, there is always a mediator. Ito yung paulit-ulit binabanggit kanina ni Harold kanina. No? So for the first covenant with, with uh, Adam, no, si Adam yung mediator. And then there is what we call the family that was formed. Tatandaan natin that center, as I've said, no, ulitin ko, the key to unlock the scripture is to think of it in terms of covenant. To simplify it further, to think of it as God's family. It's a story of God's family. We are family. We are part of God's Alive, alive, alive family, okay? So, there are family forms throughout the 6,000 years of the covenant. So, with Adam, okay, Genesis 1 to 3, we can see here that there's the formation of the one holy couple. So, God wanted to establish 
his relationship with people through this one holy couple. Okay? By the way, my reference for what I'm saying is in the Holy Bible, no? the Great Adventure Study Bible by Jeff, Jeff Cavins. And then the second, which Harold also identified earlier in Genesis 9, is Noah. So this time, instead of one holy couple, God is making a covenant with one holy family. And that's the family of Noah. Pansin din natin, di ba? Yung palaki ng palaki yung scope ng covenant ni Lord. And then with Abraham, you read the story in Genesis 15, 17, and 22, it becomes one holy tribe. Now, it's not just a couple anymore. It's not just a family anymore. Nakikita nyo guys, si Tino, gumagano siya. Palaki siya ng palaki, di ba? It's so beautiful. So from that tribe of Israel, di ba? May mga several, several tribes tayo. When you lump them all together, in Exodus 24, you see God is renewing the covenant through Moses, who's the mediator of this covenant. And this time, he's making a covenant to a one holy nation. So, buong bansa na, the, the nation of Israel. But then, nagkaroon ng nagkawatak-watak sila. No? Harold also mentioned this in a previous episode before. And then they started warring and demanding for a king. So, in 2 Samuel 7, you would see that God renewed the covenant through David as the mediator. And God established a one holy kingdom. Okay, now here's what's beautiful. In the consistent understanding of the Catholic Church for the past 2,000 years, in Luke chapter 22, the new covenant was established also. And now, it has expanded. It's not just one holy kingdom, it's now universal. And as Catholics understand this, it's called now the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So, palaki siya ng palaki. It's involving everyone. That means, being part of the church is being part of God's family, being part of the covenant that Jesus has established in the New Testament. Remember, di ba, I think the agree tayo na yung New Testament, it's really new covenant. No? So yun yung, yung New Testament na banggit ko before, it's not really just a document. If we're gonna go back to history, it's more than that. But I don't want to overwhelm our audience. Perhaps j Paul would like to, to say something first and then later on I'll ask Harold questions and I'll expound further. Pero nakita niyo yung progression. Couple. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Which I never, never noticed. Thank you for pointing that out, Birds. I like, I enjoy that. that. <laughs> for those listening on the podcast, on Spotify or Apple Podcast, nag notes po yung friends ko dito. No, because I have a question. Okay. Because the whole new covenant topic was something that we did in a past episode. And honestly, I was like more confused um, about, because I mean, to this day, I'm not quite sure what the new covenant is for mm. Catholics. Um, but I think it's the Harry Kasay, you have a covenant topic in the yes, next one, Yes, that's right? going to be so, next. Okay, I'm we'll going to hold that. that. I'm going to hold that for now. But having laid out quite simply like what the covenants have been in the Bible, I guess my takeaway is, as Burns also touched on earlier, yes, there were all these covenants that were given by God, but they were all broken. Yeah. Right? Yes. They were all broken. So, Abraham nobody, pala sa opisa, eh. so hmm. nobody kept the covenant? Uh, actually, lilinawin ko rin yun. Uh, the way we understand it, dapat malaman din kasi natin kung kailan, uh, kung ano yung covenant at kung paano nila ito makikip. Hmm. Kasi at the time na ifulfill na ito ng Diyos, importante din yun. Um, Medyo iba during the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because when God made a covenant with Abraham that he will be the father of many nations and even yung mga descendants niya will be enslaved for, um, in a foreign country, patay na si Abraham nung nagkaroon na yun ng katuparan at sa panahon na yun ni Moses. And if we will look in the Bible, sinabi na yung faith na meron si Abraham, Isaac, at saka si Jacob ay yung righteous na faith sa Diyos. At dito makikita natin na Si Abraham, sobrang obedient niya sa Diyos. Even yung to the point na when he was asked, di ba nangako na sa kanya, you will be the father of many nations. Sobrang dami. Tapos matanda na si Sarah, hindi pa sila nagkakaanak, kaya nagkaroon ng Ishmael, but basically hindi pa rin yung pangako ng Diyos. Kasi importante matupad yung pangako ng Diyos. Sino yung um, pinangakong anak niya? Si Isaac. So matanda na sila, Pinanganak si Isaac, tapos inutusan siya ng Diyos na isacrifice niya. Logically, kung ako si Abraham, 
'di ba pinangako mo sa akin na magiging father of many nations ako tapos itong nag itong pinangakong anak na yung pinangako mo sa akin na magiging anak ko ipapasacrifice mo pa sa akin but anong classing fate meron si Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11 um siya yung merong ayan ano to uh, life life chapter mo sam Life verse, <laughs> lang yeah. life verse. Eh. Life I haven't chapter. narrowed it down to a verse. Okay. <laughs> But I do remember in Hebrews 11, it says that Abraham reasoned that something along the lines of he reasoned that God could bring the dead back to life or right. something like that. So he was like, okay, I think I can do this. I can trust that God can resurrect him or something. And even during that time, wala pang concept about resurrection. Mm-hmm. Pero naniniwala na si Abraham. Kaya he's the father of faith then. Kasi hindi mo pa nakikita pero naniniwala ka na. Sobra yung faith. Hebrews 11 nga. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. I love Hebrews 11. Be- joke, joke. Ba- it was a bad joke dapat. Okay. Never mind, never mind. Yes. Sorry, But, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lulukin ko na lang yung joke ko. It was a bad joke. So, wait. So, was Abraham able to keep the covenant? Is that, is that what you're saying? Or how do we even phrase that? Mainly because na si Abraham ay sinunod pa rin niya yung inuto sa kanya ng Diyos. Hindi na lang siya nabuhay up to the time na nagkaroon na to ng fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Well, well, may mali din siya eh. Sabi kasi ni God sa kanya, wag mong dalhi, uh, I mean, don't bring anything. Dinala niya lahat ng ari-arian niya eh. So nag-break pa rin siya. Pero nag-continue siya. Lahat sila may onting breaks, may onting mga mistakes every now and then. So wait, That's did we, so did everybody break the covenant? Because if I, the way I understand it, the entire book is a book of covenant, right? Mm. And the reason why it's come this far at umabot pa sa atin is because mm. everyone broke it. That's mm. why there is a new covenant now. Right, right. But my question is, as a Catholic, what is my new covenant? Because it seems to me that it's super important that you keep the covenant. But how do I keep it when it's not clear to me what it is? Okay. I know that the, so the covenant topic is coming up. I'm, I'm just going to kind of put that aside. Um, I suppose... Yeah, we can answer later. Yeah. I suppose for this one, from what we just heard... Oh, but wait. I mean, Instaharry, are you done with the whole Abraham bit? Like, you're good? Um, siguro yung dadagdag ko na lang doon. Kasi nga... Again, nung panahon na finulfill na ng Diyos yung pangako sa kanya, hindi na siya, hindi na siya buhay physically nun eh. So, kasi at the time of fulfillment, para malaman natin kung na-keep mo yung covenant, ay dapat ikaw yung nag-keep nito. For our listeners, kasi I remember yung question ni Tina before many, many months ago. <gasps> so, may dinosaurs talaga. Yung parang paano siya, oh, where does it dinosaurs. all... Because I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are asking these questions. How, how did... Let, Tina, don't be ashamed. So, and, and it's um, the 6,000 is our salvation history. So basically, si Adam and Eve, Jewish um, story yan ng Jews. Kaya din inaaral kasi we are par- galing tayo dun eh. So basically, according to Bible scholars, not just Catholics, but Bible scholars who mostly do not agree <laughs> but agree on certain generic ideas that in the Bible, the first legit human being na nabuha historically is si Abraham. And, Abraham? And he, hey, Adam, you mean? Abraham. Abraham? Abraham? What do you mean? I, ca- I got lost, J. Paul. <laughs> Sorry. Or do you first, mean Adam? No, the first historical human being. I'm getting there. Uh, is, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Is, is Abraham. So yung Adam and onwards, these are part of the stories of, uh, of the Jews. I'm not saying it did not happen. One of the things some scholars, Bible scholars are saying that during that time kasi when, when um, the, the so history nila, When they would talk about one person, it's not just really one person. It represented a nation na kalaban. Tapos it was when the Jew... Dipansin nyo, di ba no Old Testament, lagi silang panalo? Kasi they believed that when they would win, na nat- napapatay nila yung kalaban, nananalo si Adonai, which is our, our God. They, they called God Adonai. 
So that was their understanding. And yes, there is a proto Adam and a proto Eve, but um, in major biblical understandings, hindi talaga siya like Adam and Eve lang. Kasi nga paano, 'di ba? Pag tinignan mo, pag tinignan mo yung history. So, paano nagkaroon si Cain tsaka si Abel? So sila kanap ng asawa kung sila dalawa lang. Mm. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? So But, so so basically the it's an allegory or it's an representation of a story from from understood history. That was actually the um part of what Instahari shared that I wanted to go to next. Because again, this is a topic that we have done on the podcast. Mm. We once talked about whether Adam was the first man that was ever created in the history of ever. Mm. First human being, right? Which was my understanding. <laughs> right. But if we, if we take what Instahari said, and the Bible clearly lays out a genealogy, that goes from Adam all the way to Jesus. And you can actually do the math and count back 6,000 years from our time to Adam. Mm. And from what you just said, Brother J. Paul, about, yeah, okay, so if Adam and Eve were the first human beings ever created, then who did Cain marry? Uh, who was Cain afraid of? He said that if you're going to kick me out of the Garden of Eden, then people are going to kill me. What right. people are, is he talking about? And so when you piece these things together, I think logically it makes sense that Adam and Eve were not the first human beings that were created. And I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, yeah. is that such a, you know, is that such I, I a think, big thing? I think because na... um, when the Reformation happened, maraming, maraming church history na wala. Na ngayon, ngayon like like sila pastor required are really studying yung mga big mega churches na, na non-catholic kasi yun nga eh marami kasi yung tinalikuran nung nung nag nagschism na maraming maraming parang church history ang tinanggal and kasi nga why do we need to study jewish history kasi history ng christianity yan kasi kasi christianity is not a recon, it's not when you become christian from a jew you're not converted you're being completed mm. so yeah. so yun so i guess siguro to end what i'm saying is as one of the major understandings in the church is that the bible is anagogical so meaning it is leading it the whole bible from genesis to revelation all leads to the glory and kingdom and kingship of Jesus Christ. Yes, and yeah, yeah, I think we all agree on that. Yeah, pero parang kaya siya ganun na na, na nasulat. So ang dami hindi tinanggap eh. We all as Christians agree on the general arc of the Bible and what the end destination is. It's the stuff in between where we mm. don't see eye to eye. And I think this is one of those things. Right? And I mean, Burns, what are your thoughts on this whole 6,000 years, Adam, all that stuff? Okay, I don't want to comment on the exact year. I have to do more research and study on that because I don't want to say something I'm not 100% sure of. But what I wanted to comment is that the church has a clear teaching on the first human beings. No? You can find the teaching in the Catechism and in, an, in a document called Humani Generis. I think it was Pope Pius XII who published that. And uh, it's important for us Catholic Christians to understand that we come from a common parents. Now, whether we call them literally Adam or Eve, we don't know. But the Bible, the inspired writers of the scripture reveal to us that the first man, because Adam literally means man, diba? Brother yeah. J. Paul in yeah. Hebrew, it's man. Adam. So it could very well be, and Eve meaning mother of all the living. So it could very well mean that this Adam and Eve, this holy couple in the covenant of God, They are just a representation of another people no, or another couple. But for the sake of communicating it in the scriptures, remember the book of Genesis has a genre. Eh, hindi natin pwedeng itapon na lang yung genre. We have to look at it. Ano ba yung genre ng Genesis? It's a factual history said in Hebrew literary form. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Pansinin nyo sa chapter 1. 
Merong mga literary devices na ginamit dyan, repetition on the first day, the second day. No, may mga parallelisms yan if you will try to to uh, illustrate. No, ang, pagpansinin ninyo yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga ginawa. It's logical. The Lord created first the background and then the last was the man and the woman. No, So, in other words, the church is simply telling us, okay, let's not be too stressed about who this Adam and Eve literally were. But what the scripture is telling us, number one, God created us, you know, in His image and likeness, as, and we agree on that. That's a common factor in our dialogue. Number two, we have a common parent that's, quote-unquote, Adam and Eve. And why is it necessary to have a common parent? Because of the teaching on original sin. Yes. No? So if there is no common parent, <laughs> that means a part of the human race did not have that original sin, okay? And it's a mystery how exactly that was contracted. Or rather, it's not contracted, no, but it's some, uh, somehow, quote-unquote, passed on. I'm using imperfect theolo- uh, words here. In theology, you have to be precise, but for the sake of our viewers, I'm just summarizing. And number three, okay, we have to know that the soul comes from God, whether you believe in evolution or not. Kailangan ng malinaw sa atin. Yung kaluluwa, yung spirito, hindi yan nag-evolve. Galing sa Diyos yan. No? So, yun yung important things. Now, the church doesn't contradict science. Yes. If science will one day tell us the, the world evolved in this particular way, if that has no contradiction to the faith, then the church can embrace that because the church has been a patron of science. Ulitin ko, yun lang ang tatlo. Number one, we have common parentage. It's important. Number two, the soul came from God. Number three, we were made in the image and likeness of God. And sorry, I forgot number four. The world did not just come out of an accident. There is a deliberate design. And again, why? Because of love. Love is deliberate. Love is, is um, it, makes, it makes things orderly. You know, of course, there's spontaneity in love, but love, the love of God gave order and design for our world. No, so I, again, that's just my thoughts on that. In fact, yung question ko nga hindi tungkol dyan eh. Kasi I think we're talking about the Bible, no? So later, perhaps after we talk about this Adam and Eve thing, I'd like to ask Harold some questions about the Bible. But Sam, back to you. Because I don't think the creation story in Genesis is logical. It's not. Yeah. Um, okay. And I what think this think is... So? Because there's talk like... um the things that you pointed out about like the first day this was created, second day this was created, there was day and then there was morning and there was evening. Mm. The sun is only created on like what day four, which is the marker of, you know, what is daytime and what is evening. And so with that being created later on, this language of it was morning and it was evening, it doesn't make sense. Um, I think in that discussion that we had before, Mm -hmm. the consensus was that this is spiritual text. It's figurative. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this is why a lot of people who are not Christians think that we are like blindly following something mm. that doesn't even make but, sense. But and yeah. you're right. It, I mean, you know, Christianity does not contradict science. It doesn't. But mm. it's a, I think it is like a misunderstanding of some of the text that makes us look like that. Yes, because we and don't know context. Yes, and but for those who are listening, the scientific method was this nakadiscover Catholic Christians. Catholic, to be precise, in even the university system. Anyway, yeah. that's for further episodes in the future. <laughs> Sorry. Alam nyo ba, may trivia, may bagong na-discover parang another species of man aside from Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. And you know what it's called? Homo luzonosis. It wow. was discovered in the zone. Lalang. Recently. Wow. Very old. Very old. Very old. Uh, I don't know if sino na una. Neanderthal or yon. Pero it's a... Uh, Lalang. Just cool. Ito ba yung kasabay ng dinosaurs? <laughs> I haven't checked the data eh. Pero lalang. I, I like studying science. Anyway. Yes, it's... Sorry. Ito na yung nagtataas na kawan. No. <laughs> I'm sorry kasi medyo na-distract ako kanina. I don't think I was able to clearly explain yung about kay Abraham. Sorry, sorry, Instahari. I think that was me. You want to go apologize. back to that? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just want to um, go back to that and make sure na na-explain ko siya clearly. Because, um, again, this covenant that we must keep, it's connected to our faith. Yun yung faith na dapat meron tayo. 
So, yung yung panahon na nagbigay ng pangako ang Diyos, dapat yung mga tao merong faith dun sa pangako na hanggat hindi pa to natutupad. Pero kapag nagkaroon na to ng katuparan, from the faith of believing in the promise, dapat mag-move na siya dun sa faith na naniniwala dun sa fulfillment ng promise. What am I trying to explain? Parang ganito. Before um, sa Old Testament, nangako ang Diyos na magpapadala na Masaya. Ano yung faith na meron dapat yung mga Israelites? The faith that God will be sending a Messiah. The yeah. faith on the promise. Hanggat hindi dumadating si Jesus, anong klaseng faith yung dapat meron sila? Maniwala dun sa promise. Ngayon, kapag nung dumating na si Jesus as the fulfillment of the promise, from, believe, from the faith of believing in the promise, dapat mag-move na siya dun sa faith believing in the fulfillment of the promise. At yun yung gagamitin kong logic when I explain about the situation of Abraham. Because si Abraham, namatay na siya bago pa nagkaroon ng fulfillment yung pangako sa kanya ng Diyos. And so for us, the way we understand it, um, nakip pa rin ni Moses, ah, ni Moses, ni Abraham yung pangako sa kanya because during that time, ang pangako sa kanya, ah, ang faith na meron dapat ay yung maniwala dun sa pangako kasi hindi pa nangyayari yung fulfillment ng pangako. Eh. So nung dumating na si Moses para to pa rin ito, yun na, madedivide na yung mga tao. Sino yung maniniwala sa kanya? Ano yung, sino yung nagkaroon ng faith na maniwala na ito ay parte ng fulfillment ng Diyos na natupad hundreds of years after? So, yun yung sa the way we understand it. And we wouldn't call him the father of faith if he broke the covenant. I mean, that's a pretty big title for someone who didn't keep it. Yun. Well, and the saints were always sinners. No, I mean, all the great saints of the church started as sinners. We were weak. I mean, Hebrews 11, Sam, those people in Hebrews 11, they failed a lot of times, and yet we are celebrating them. I don't, no? I'm not saying they were sinless. I'm just saying they kept the covenant. He oh, kept yeah. the covenant. Abraham was, was so, good. Yeah. Well, yes. he's not perfect. He, oh, gosh, siyang, no. Yeah, yun lang. Yun lang eh. yeah. That's why yung balik tayo do sa tanong kanina na bakit sila pa ulit-ulit nag-fail ng covenant. That's why, at the end, in the fullness of time, God Himself sent His Son. No, not anymore a prophet, not anymore any other mediator, but God Himself. And that's in the Christian Orthodox understanding. Jesus Himself established a new covenant. In fact, in the scriptures, no, sinabi niya yan eh. Sinabi sa atin ni Jesus that I am establishing a new covenant in my blood. That's Luke 22, chap- uh, chapter 22, verse 20. And that is the new covenant, no? So, meaning, because now, it's not just any human being establishing this covenant and fulfilling it. Therefore, this is the one and lasting covenant of all the covenants. And that's the covenant established by Jesus himself. And in our understanding, based on history, this covenant now is not just one tribe, one couple. This covenant now is not just one holy nation. It's the whole world being invited to the new covenant church that God himself, which Christ, Jesus himself, has established. Again, that was the consistent understanding of Christians for the past 2,000 years. And again, no, yung sinasabi ko dati sa ibang episode natin, the, new, the term New Testament, New Covenant, if magtanong ka sa first century Jew, okay, let's say time travel tayo guys, total, marami naman tayong travel goals. No? Why don't we try to take a time travel and go to the first century Christianity during the time of the apostles or a little after Jesus rose from the dead. When you ask a Jew, tanongin mo, asan po yung New Testament? They cannot show you that. But they will bring you to a place. They will bring you to either someone's home and then you would have to wait for you to do the covenant. Eh, ano ba yung doing the covenant? The breaking of the bread and the preaching of the apostles. That's why in Luke 22, 19, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Notice in the Holy Mass, when the, when the chalice is lifted, the priest would say, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new, bago, everlasting covenant. covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, this is the fulfillment of all those covenants in the past because you would need to also understand, lahat ng covenants in the past, they involve certain sacrifices. May rituals yan. No, I, I don't remember. I think it was in Exodus 25 in the covenant with, Mo, with, with Moses. No, nag sprinkle ng blood si Moses sa mga tao. No, and then they had to, in the Passover, they have to paint their doorposts with the blood. No, because that's part of the ritual of God's covenant with his people. 
But now, in Jesus' time, the fulfill na niya because he himself offered his life on the cross. There's no need for those sacrifices in the old. The old has passed. It has been fulfilled in the new. What we now receive is not anymore a sacrifice of, of uh, an animal, but the new covenant of Jesus' blood in the form of the Eucharist. And again, you know understanding ng church for the past 2,000 years. I'm just laying down the facts. I, in Sina and Stahari have a different understanding of what the new covenant is. You've said it a few times. The second coming is the new covenant for you guys. That is what we are going to talk about on the next episode. So we're going to leave this hanging a little bit, guys. In the meantime, yes, Instahari. Sorry. Ako yung medyo nadedelay. Yung sa part ng kay Adam, I just want to add kanina. Um, because we're talking about Adam. And I know we've discussed this before that we believe na... Kasi kung si Adam yung unang taong nabuhay and 6,000 years yun from our time right now, paano yung na-discover ng mga archaeologists ng mga fossils na mm-hmm. nag-exist even before that? So kagaya ng sinabi ni Burns kanina, hindi contradict yung science sa faith natin. And that's why we believe na meron ng mga tao na nabuhay even nice. before that. And also, yung nabanggit nyo na yung kay, yung napangasawa ni Cain, yung papatay kay Cain, even yung sinabi nung um, magsasama na si Adam and Eve, iwan nung man yung parents niya. So, who are Adam's parents during that time? So, meron yung mga makikita tayo um, and even, uh, yeah, yung mga bagay sa, sa Genesis na magsasabi na etong creation story na to ay hindi siya yung physical or literal na creation. Gusto ko lang magdagdag din sa sinabi ni Sam kanina na yung on the fourth day na create yung sun. Actually, yung sun, moon, and stars ay na create on the fourth day. Pero first day ay miliwanag na. Let there be light sa first day and there was light. Oh my and God, God saw what that the it light was, was that? Saan nagaling yung light? Um, I've heard before, <laughs> Parang party party yung brother Jay. May ilaw-ilaw eh. Disco light ba yun? Disco light. Party party pang Friday night talaga si Aaron. And the church accepts that. No? Basta yun lang yung aalalahanin mo doon. That there is a creator. It was created with design and with love. How exactly it happened is up to science to to tell us no basta yung point lang ng genesis is really to tell us there is someone who loves us that even though he didn't need us he created us out of that gratuitous blessedness and overflowing of his divine love okay i think we can leave it at that we got to wrap anyway yeah so <laughs> on the next topic we'll just um talk about the bible as a book of covenant and then the topics after that we'll go through the covenants on every um this chosen people that i mentioned a while ago oh oh okay so those are two okay. separate ones all right well it's gonna be covenant galore on the narrow door podcast so if this is your jam you can join us and if you guys have any questions you can email it to us the narrow door podcast at gmail.com and you can follow all of us on social media at the Tina Ryan at Burns Kaasi at Harold.Resho at J. Paul Hernandez and at I am Sam O. You can find these guys on their own podcasts, um, whatever else they're doing. I'll link it all down in the show description. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. <laughs>